have so much to talk about in these Tuesday night dual recording sessions. So here's how we're going to break it down. War Room, we're going to talk about Joe Douglas, the roster, and the trade deadline, and the activity or lack of activity around it. Podcast is going to be a little more focused on Zach Wilson, the tape from Jets Giants, and previewing Jets Chargers. A lot to cover. Connor, how we doing? How we feeling? How was your Halloween? You excited about November? How we doing? It was good. I was Rich Kotite at NBC today for Halloween, <laughs> which was, the like, I woke up. And we had the group text going, me, Barry, Jay, and, and some of our producers. And we're like, we should dress up. It's fun. Like, everybody that does shows dresses up. And, all, and like, it came to me. This is, I don't know what this says about me. I easily own all of the things to be, to dress as Rich Co-Type for the day. Like, I have the 90s Jets jacket, the black and green one with the old logo, the matching hat, uh, my blue light glasses that look like kind of the ones he wore and i put on my video gaming headset and wore to work and i was rich kotite so it was a really funny halloween i had a lot of fun with that on twitter while the trade deadline which nothing is a bigger letdown every year than the nfl trade deadline it is Always. like when, Always. when you look at the nba the mlb and the nhl three tremendous trade deadlines where like star talent is moving on the nfl is an awful trade deadline um, we're going to get into some of that today. So it's just a jam-packed start of the week. And everybody was screaming. Mind you, everybody was screaming today for Jets Raiders to be flexed in all this. And the news Come came on. out right before we sat down to tape this that it's not being flexed. People are really pissed about that. I mean, Deal with it. We're America's team this year. Everybody yeah, wants to watch the, the Jets. Jets. Come on now. Everybody cares about the four and three Jets. So The most interesting team in the NFL in spite of the lack of activity. I'm wearing this today because my kids were Mario and Luigi. So I just threw on a bunch of green stuff with a, a Luigi hat. And I just like wearing this jacket. So I just find any excuse I can to wear it. And I'm wearing it. And I'm happy the Jets are four and three. So that's it. So trade deadline. As you said, this is always more sizzled in steak. The Jets have had a couple interesting moments throughout their history. Percy Harvin ultimately didn't really work out. James Robinson last year ultimately didn't really work out. Richard Robinson, the randomest guy they ever traded a fifth round pick for. They traded away Leonard Williams at the trade deadline. I was reminded by uh, Brian Costello today. They also traded for Flacco at the deadline. How could I forget? The Jets ultimately really do nothing. They add Roger Saffold, kind of a veteran who... I think most of us kind of feel is done to the practice squad. Maybe he eventually gets elevated for more depth on the interior. It's something, you know, he's a guy who like five years ago, I feel like you and I talked about, like, it would be awesome if the Jets added him to their interior offensive line. At this point, it's a little more of like the Ryan Khalil signing. So I'm not getting my hopes up for it. It seems like the Jets are optimistic that Joe Tittman's back, like, in the next week or two, which is great and kind of makes things a little better. Although I am still very worried about their depth with both Connor McGovern and Wes Schweitzer going on IR, which means they're out for at least the next four weeks. Um, I think there was a lot of anger today. I saw a lot of anger on Twitter and a lot of anger on discord. And look, I think we've been probably more critical of Joe Doug Douglas than most people who follow the jets and not, I don't think we've been overly critical on him. I always default back to, I think to date, Joe Douglas has been probably a C-plus GM who gets treated like an A-plus GM by the fans. And Robert Sala has been a C-minus coach who gets treated like an F-minus coach by the fans. And what we try to do, I think, is kind of even that out a little bit, which makes it seem like we're a little more pro Sala and anti-Douglas. But ultimately, like, I think Douglas is like most GMs. He's like a middle-of-the-pack GM. There's been some really good. There's been some really bad. The win-loss record is what it is. And... I feel like we kill him when it's appropriate and we are fair to him when it's appropriate. Now, am I, I'm, I'm a little frustrated because I do think windows are rare in the NFL. And I'm not saying the Jets like have the look and feel of a Super Bowl contender, but this is a weird season where they can absolutely make the playoffs. And if they go from scoring one offensive touchdown a game, which is literally what they're averaging this year, to two offensive touchdowns a game... They could probably win the AFC East and have a home playoff game. And that means a lot to this organization at this point. So when you see all the injuries that they've sustained, you wonder if the moment is there to be a touch more aggressive, to give yourself a little more insurance at quarterback, a little more insurance on the offensive line, and maybe a little more insurance at receiver. And 
I know there's not always a ton of great options. People are not trading away like good or valuable offensive linemen generally. At quarterback, you know, could you have been a little more aggressive and got a Jacoby Brissett or a Josh Dobbs? Maybe. And that's a conversation to have. I don't know how they feel about Trevor Simeon internally. And at receiver, you know, they probably would have had to be a little more aggressive than they would have liked. And I don't know if they liked what they saw from Malik Taylor's, you know, 20 snaps last game, and they think they could get a little more from Brownlee. I think you can make a, a rational argument to be like, look, like there wasn't too much that could have been done here that really moves the needle. But I would rather see them take a couple swings and see if they could improve by 5 to 8%. And if that's the difference between winning nine games and not breaking this playoff drought and winning 10 games, I think it could be worth it. So mildly frustrated, not apoplectic that nothing happened. But I, I just, I'm worried that they are so close to being just having one injury too many where this thing could like tip over. And we'll talk about it a little more when we talk about Zach Wilson later in the pod, but it's very easy to lose sight of the fact that during this three game winning streak, the jets have scored a total of three offensive touchdowns, all three by Brees Hall. And on the season, I believe they have eight offensive touchdowns, which is crazy through seven games. And I don't know how sustainable that ends up being, I guess, are you one surprised by the lack of activity from the Jets at the deadline? And how would you assess how Douglas handled this overall situation? Well, let's also be fair, too. The Eagles let Brees score. So they really have two, (laughs) honestly. Two. Two. They really have two. So, okay. It's weird. It's, It's kind of, there's both sides to it. One, the supply of the trade deadline for the NFL every year is not usually what it's cracked up to be. There's usually not a ton out there to go get. Um, this one specifically, of course, the star talent was at a position group the Jets really didn't need. They didn't need to go get one of Washington's edge rusher. They didn't need to go get Leonard Williams back. Like The Jets, are, although after the Al Woods injury, they are going to need interior D-line help. But we think Tanzel Smart can be that two-gapping 15 snaps kind of run stopping detackle. So we'll, that's the good thing about having that depth on the practice squad. So there's that, but I do think there's a couple things here. One kind of to piggyback off of your open, why Douglas is such a fascinating case of ranking his status at GM is because he's not a middle of the pack GM that just operates in middle pack things. He has extremes, right? Like, he used the number two overall pick on Zach Wilson. It that looks like, and it was it was such a colossal failure for them. They had to go get Aaron Rodgers, right? He also has drafted Sauce Gardner, defensive rookie of the year, Garrett Wilson, offensive rookie of the year. Jermaine Johnson looks really good. They traded back in to get him. They traded up to get Brees. Like his hits are are grand slams. His misses are strikeouts on three pitches. Yep. So it's so weird to evaluate him or well it's not. You and I I think call it really fair. I really do. And it's word it's never received well when we talk about Joe Douglas. It's kind of a topic we've gotten away from because it makes people irrationally angry because there's people that think he's the greatest GM ever and there's people that think he should be fired and because of the extremes and it's really just right in the middle somewhere. But I think it just feels like they are lacking a little creativity right now. Like was there a move out there that was worth taking a swing on that we didn't see coming. And, and maybe once again, that move didn't exist. The only thing I could I could significantly be annoyed about, because I've been annoyed about it for, what, seven months now? They don't have a backup quarterback. And I don't yeah. understand. We The craziest thing about it to me is, you just witnessed your worst fear against the Giants. Not for you. It happened to the Giants. The Giants went into a game with the guy suited up as their number two quarterback that they don't trust, they won't let throw, they basically went to church and said, please, I hope DeVito doesn't have to play. With a quarterback in Tyrod Taylor that gets hit and gets hurt. Zach Wilson, credit to him, he's taken some big hits this year and he's gotten up. But on the flip side, Zach Wilson has been hurt his first two years as an NFL starter. Going into year three, he has that on his record. Yep. The Jets have no interest in playing Tim Boyle. Zach Wilson has these long stretches where the offense cannot function, and they don't even have Tim Boyle take off the parka. So how you – like, you couldn't be the team to go swap a seventh and a sixth for Josh Dobbs? I thought Josh – I thought you'd throw a fifth 
for Dobbs. And I know the Jets are in a weird situation where they don't have certain picks. Like they did, they're not going to give up a fourth, but you can get creative with future future picks. That the Cardinals were getting rid of Josh Dobbs. They wanted to do right by him. They want to see what they have in Clayton Toon before they get Kyler Murray back. Josh Dobbs had no place on that roster anymore. And this isn't about Josh Dobbs. You're telling me the Commanders wouldn't have traded Jacoby Brissett. They traded their two pass rushers, but they wouldn't trade Jacoby Brissett, who's on an expiring. Like, in this conversation, it doesn't have to be about Dobbs or Brissett. It's that the Jets do not have a backup quarterback and that the Jets have no interest and have had no interest for half a year now of finding one. It's And I know they thought Zach Wilson was that. And, I mean, it, this, is, this is a whole other conversation. Like, we'll do the Zach conversation probably on the main podcast because that's I'm not going down that road in the war room, which is about the trade, the inactivity of the trade deadline. Like, I can't say, get on here and kill the Jets for not getting Cortland Sutton or not making a move that didn't exist. That, that's just not fair, and I think that's a problem in NFL coverage. But they don't have a backup quarterback, and that's something that usually can exist at the deadline. And now we that we go into a stretch where the Jets, we think should beat the Chargers, but they're not going to be favored. They will be favored against the Raiders. I mean, you're telling me Zach Wilson has won Joey Bosa or Max Crosby hit away from, hey, we got Tim Boyle out there. We we probably can't score any points realistically. Like I, it's just I don't know. It's that to me is not GMing. It's not. And I and once again, I'm not doing the Joe Douglas is awful or Joe Douglas is great. GMing is making sure you have some insurance at the most pivotal points of the roster. And the Giants, the Giants season just ended by the way because they didn't. It ended. Yep. It yep. ended because they didn't. It's over. 